Shalom and blessings to you all saints. Welcome to this broadcast. Of course, this is the day that Yahweh has made. It continues to be that as the sun is up here in Guyana, South America, and his day began last evening. So this continues to be the day that Yahweh has made. We are encouraged as saints to rejoice and to be glad in it. As you join the broadcast today, please indicate that whether you can see and you can also hear me clearly, we always want to have this check done so that the quality of the stream can be analyzed and I would know what to do. Hopefully it's not, uh, or it is, I should say, something I can control. Hence, I can make that adjustment. So welcome to the broadcast today and thank you so much for joining. I bid you all a saint's shalom and shalom speaks of that peace that Yahweh gives to us that assures us that it is always well. It does not matter what we face in life. We have that guarantee, we have the assurance, we have that continued conviction that it is well. So I bid you all shalom. It's clear, great, excellent. Excellent news. The quality of the broadcast from one person, one person's report is that it's clear too. So we good. Okay, so that's good news. Welcome, welcome and thank you so much for being here with me today. As always, I encourage you saints to be strong, to be encouraged, to be uh, bold in reference to your faith and your conviction. Some of you say that you see reactions. If I do this, let me see if it's going to work today. Um, I hope it doesn't. Good. Because Facebook does whatever it is, whatever, whenever it wants to. I don't know. I'm trying my best to remove that reaction and I'm not working. Nida said she loves my attire. Thank you, Nida. Look at me. <laughs> I'm so grateful. I am so grateful um, for that compliment. And I want to share with you all that I remember um, in the church, Calvary Temple, they brought someone in and she said, or the person said that these prints are demonic. You shouldn't wear them. And I find it amazing that that which spoke to African or Hebrewness is demonic. Everything else seems to be okay, apart from what we wear culturally and naturally we are told to discard mats or carpets get it out of your house because they are all demonic don't wear these things because they said that you can be possessed but i want to see which demon can possess me if i possess or since i possess the spirit of yahweh which demon can possess me if i wear clothing bring one I can't believe that people could be so asinine, so insane and so silly that we are told in Calvary Temple, Assemblies of God Church, that should you wear an African print, it is demonic. Think the people playing on the drums and so on, demonic. But if you play the guitar, you play the drum set, you play keyboard and you sing and dance that is not demonic but if you if you beat as they call it if you play on the african drums that is demonic has anybody understood what i said to you yet right so i'm saying to all of you look at me and i want you to tell me which demon can possess a saint of yahweh when we have the spirit Holy Spirit in us. Which demon wants to take the risk of coming around me? And all of that came from Nida's compliment, by the way. Thank you so much, my daughter. I say so you're welcome. I am so grateful. Thank you. And thanks to the saints who have seen it fit to ensure that I look as wonderful as I do. I'm so grateful. Okay. Revelation of Yeshua to Yochanan. Now, whenever I say what is called the title of this book, it is important for me to make it clear to all of you that the monitor outside has to be down, please. Yochanan was given a revelation of Yeshua. 
Sister Dan, Brother Brian, and all of you, shalom and blessings. Love you all. I saw Pastor Rick for this morning at Come As You Are Ministries, also dressed in his African or Hebrew attire. I love it. I love it. Even Apostle Thomas has a solid, massive navy blue. Boy, Apostle Thomas went out for them the other day. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And Pastor Mel and others, of course, I saw a sister the other day. Oh, my sister. I think it was Amanda. She was so beautifully dressed in her native cultural outfit. I love it. As I said, this is when we dress up. When I go with my tie and my suit and my jacket, that's dressing down. This is when I dress up. Because I am liberated. I am free. Apostle Lambert Shalom. So Yochanan, though he would have been an apostle of Yeshua, my son, good to see you. He was given a revelation of Yeshua HaMashiach. In this revelation that Yochanan got, hear me carefully here, Yochanan did not even have the ability in his revelation, in that revelation, to determine or distinguish between an elder and the Messiah. He, he was bowing to worship one of them. He said, don't do that. He was prohibited from bowing to worship an elder. That's how glorious they looked. Yahweh chose to give Yohanan, an apostle who walked with the Messiah, chose to give him a revelation, which means to take the cover off, of who he was really walking with. I want to share with you all, I want to share with you all as saints, that what you are seeing as now in the flesh cannot be compared to what you shall be when we have got that immortal body. There is a distinct level of glory that we will have that we should as saints be eager to behold and eager to receive. That is why when saints go to sleep, or as we say, when saints die, as some people put it, I rejoice because I understand that they are going to experience the beautification in the first resurrection. They're going to experience the glory. And they are now seeing the glory of Yahweh and Yeshua HaMashiach. Shalom, Pastor Jay, so good to see you. Revelation chapter 13. We should be eager to see it. That is why we don't fear natural death. You shouldn't be afraid of it. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying you should be reckless and stupid, but you shouldn't be afraid of what people can do to you. There is a glorious body that we by faith are going to receive, and you can't get it if you're alive. For it's appointed unto man once to die, one, everybody to die once, and after death, judgment. We should be excited, we should be elated, we should be happy to know that we've been chosen to experience that. So I don't have time to be afraid of anything or anyone. What I dread is what I would be without the grace of Yahweh upon my life, without the mercy of Yahweh being extended to me. I am afraid of what I can turn out to be, for there's no limit to the, to the evil that one can display without the spirit of Yahweh in him, controlling or restraining him. Even if you are at this moment, according to what Shaul wrote to the, the Galatian saints and told them, that if a brother is overtaken in a fault, he's still a brother. And that brother is still not at his worst. Just understand that. Even whatever, because all of us don't have, and every sinner doesn't have a perfectly clean slate at this moment. So even if there's something that you're dealing with, you are still not at your worst. The spirit of truth still restrains you, still constrains you, still provides you with the strength to get up. And that is why I do not look down on saints when they are in trouble, because I understand that in order for you to be given mercy, you must be able to show it to people. I don't write saints off. Why you always taking me here, he knows. Only the grace, which is the influence of Yahweh's goodness upon us, can cause us to be what we are. I am what I am by the grace of Yahweh, said Shaul. I'm nothing without the grace of Yahweh, and neither are you. 
We are not who we are by discipline. You are who you are by grace. You are not who you are by choice. You are who you are by grace. You're not clean because you chose to be. You're clean because of mercy. And what Yahweh describes to us as justification, meaning he chose to say that you're guiltless. He didn't choose to be guiltless. You cannot choose to be clean. You have been cleansed by the grace of Yahweh. So Shaul wrote to the church of Galatia and told them, he said, if a brother, a brother is, or a man is overtaken in a fault, you who are spiritual must restore him in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, or you will also be tempted. If ever you are arrogant and mean towards somebody who is in trouble, watch it, because temptation will remind you that you were only there by grace. Revelation of Yeshua to Yochanan, chapter 13. And this speaks to the beast. We are still in the year where Yahweh is causing the church to understand the spiritual authority of the priests, which will be the leaders of the church today. Hear me carefully, saints. Hear me carefully, saints. Yahweh, in the old covenant, when Israel would have been brought out of Egypt, and we're working, walking in the wilderness. Hear me. Yahweh even thereafter ensured that the priests were there to remind them, to guide them spiritually, to ensure that they understood what was prohibited and what was permitted according to Yahweh's grace. He said, when a priest speaks to you, when you seek his counsel, he will answer you. Do what he said. Do not drift to the right. Do not drift to the left but stay on track regarding spiritual counsel, regarding spiritual authority. Obviously, the volume is a little low. Is anybody else experiencing a little low volume? Just let me know so I can fix it or try to do so. So the children of Israel were given spiritual guides called priests. And the priests, when they were in their right mind and in the right spirit, they okay so brother Robbie, you turn the volume on your phone up put on your piece or something and you'll be good the priests when they were in the right mind listen to me saints the priests were always positioned to discourage israel from idolatrous behavior they were always there to discourage israel from going off course stay with me here the spiritual policemen the spiritual guides, the spiritual authority of Israel, who were the Levites, were positioned to always discourage Israel from idolatry. Jesse, good to see you. That was their responsibility. Apart from making sacrifices to Yahweh, apart from making gifts to Yahweh on behalf of the people, apart from seeking to have atoning done, they were responsible for guiding Israel. Say, so you shouldn't go here. You should not do that. You shouldn't mingle with these people. You shouldn't follow after idols. You shouldn't behave in this manner because the priests were authorized to guide Israel. Today, the church has been given the gifts of Messiah, the apostle, the prophet, evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. And the gifts have been given to the church to equip the saints, to edify the body so that you can work in ministry and so that you can all come to the knowledge of the Messiah. Unity. There must be unity of the trust that we have, which is faith. And there must be unity of the knowledge of Messiah. All of us as saints must be on the same page in every part of the world in reference to what we know and what we believe. Until then, there is the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. How do you tell me then? In, the, in, in Adventists and others, oh, there's nothing like an apostle. So how you got a pastor? You, there's no cessation of the gifts of Messiah. There's those who teach in the New Testament, some of them say, oh, you know, you don't have any apostle anymore. The gifts have ceased in some circles. No. No. Because it says these are given until we all come 
into the, uni the unity of the faith and unity of knowledge. What does unity of knowledge mean? That every saint across the world will believe the same thing. You don't have unity of knowledge if you have one doctrine and I have another. And if you have your belief and I have mine, and if you have got your 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 your, your edict by which you function another but somebody has something else and if you have your denomination and i have mine there is no unity of faith and there is no unity of knowledge we would all be on the same page believing the same thing trusting in the same god having the same saving not that oh you say yeshua i say jesus i say jesus you say yeshua or i say yeshua you say jesus you say what you want it doesn't work like that the spirit of truth leads the saints into all truth, not some. And this is why Yahweh is, is causing the church to understand spiritual authority. If you don't like spiritual authority, you are a rebel. If you believe that you could read for yourself, find some corner, tuck away with your Bible, and you will have all the revelation about God for yourself, you are an absolute rebel. You're not a saint. Like I started with the wrong foot today. Somebody must, must, must have pushed the wrong button. Listen to me. You are not a saint. I'm not saying you are in trouble. You're not a saint, period. If you believe that you could go into some corner somewhere and you can read for yourself, hide in some corner, and you have some personal revelation about Yeshua HaMashiach, you are not a saint. I'm not saying you're in trouble. I'm not saying you should get it right. You're not a saint. Because the spirit of truth never leads you away from spiritual authority. Come. The spirit of truth never leads you away from spiritual authority. You may be in a little bit of trouble in disobedience. You may be having a little issue with instruction. You may be mad if somebody talked to you, but you will never be led away from spiritual authority. Get that straight. There is a huge difference between sin and rebellion against authority. Big difference. You can be in some, some, some wrong behavior. It doesn't mean that you are rebellious against authority. Because when authority rebukes, you can fix it and say, well, it's not wrong, I'm done. But when you are rebelling against authority, that goes beyond sin. It goes into what is called apostasy. You have fallen away from divine instruction and truth. An apostate can be well behaved. Just understand that. But they do not respect authority and truth. An apostate can be well behaved. They don't screw around the place. They don't be drunk laying in the corner of the road. They don't steal anybody's money. They do not be in, be in revelry and partying and, and backball, wind up, block your back, break your neck, lay out. Uh, uh, they don't do those things. They can be well behaved, but they have no respect for spiritual authority and they do not abide by truth. Just understand that. And may I inform you that some of you who are not careful are inspired by apostates. You believe that they are examples for you to follow. Oh, that Yahweh would open your eyes to see what you think is inspirational. If you have a problem, or if you as a saint are involved in some behavior that you shouldn't be involved in, you don't just look for somebody who is doing what you're not to say that's my example. It doesn't work like that. Look for the ones who are authorized to correct your behavior. 
Not the ones who are doing something different. You say, oh, it was because she's not doing this, I'll follow her. Apostates will encourage you to turn away from spiritual authority and follow their advice instead of truth. And that takes us to Revelation chapter 13, the revelation of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Yochanan, chapter 13, where the beast is being described. And this beast in verse 7 is allowed to make, Revelation 13, 7, we begin from there. The beast is allowed to make war, war on Yahweh's holy people. And this is again recapitulation from last week. The beast is allowed to make war. Some you say, why don't I come off more often? Because I am honestly, <laughs> honestly, I am so cautious about speaking to you saints often. And I'm telling you all the truth from my heart, from the depth of my heart. I am so cautious. The times I say, let me do a broadcast, and I say, no, no don't do it. I'm talking to, in terms of doing the week. I am so cautious. I want to use the word afraid, but not afraid. I'm so cautious about talking to some of you often. I am very, very cautious. Extremely cautious about speaking to you often. So I prefer to recapitulate, go back, recap on Sunday or whenever we meet, and let's move forward. The beast is allowed to make war. It is allowed to do it. Who allows the, the beast to do it? Yahweh. So Yahweh, the loving God, the God is love God, is saying to the beast, go ahead, fight against my own people. The holy people are called saints and defeat them. And that's where some of you saw the hashtag defeated but victorious. Some saints are going to be killed. It doesn't mean that we've lost in reference to the, the, the ultimate. I am still holy, still sanctified, still washed by the blood of the Lamb, still chosen, still chosen before the foundation of the world, still called a saint, though the beast may defeat in terms of war. The saints, the beast doesn't change the saints description from Yahweh's holy mouth. What Yahweh says you are remains what you are regardless of your earthly experience. What Yahweh says that you are remains what you are regardless of your earthly experience. What Yahweh says you are remains what you are. You don't change your condition. Your experiences may be different, but what Yahweh says you are remains what you are regardless of your earthly experience. And so the beast makes war with the holy people, not with the sinners. What does that mean? Let me help you all. It is not the Antichrist who's fighting you alone. The Antichrist has got armies people in the earth who will come to fight the saints. All these high-tech military equipment are not just being designed to fight, oh, let's, USA fights the Arabs, the Arabs fight this one, African fight, no. The ultimate goal of technology in terms of warfare is, to, is for the saints to be attacked and killed. Ooh. It is not for you to escape. It is not, there's no bubble that the Yahweh is going to create for you to hide in. The target of the wicked is always the righteous. That's the ultimate target. The ultimate target of the wicked is the righteous. Nobody else. 
They practice on one another. But at the end of it all, the target of the wicked will be the righteous. They will fight against the saints. They'll target the saints. They will do everything in their power to defeat the saints. And at this juncture here, they are the, 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 the beast has his army and they will defeat the saints. It was given authority over every tribe, over every people, over every language, over every nation. This beast will have global control so you can't run anywhere. Don't say you're coming home to Ghana to escape. It will control every territory. Africa would not be a place of escape. Though the United Nations gathered and they chopped the world and the earth into pieces and say, this is your country, that's your country. Africa is not Africa as you know it. And Israel is not Israel as you know it. But even that would not be, a, there's no place for the righteous to hide because you shine. And you will see why I said today the broadcast is about persevering and trusting. Verse 8 is where we begin this week. Everyone, everyone, listen to the language please. Everyone, Paul said, should the saints fight back during this period? They will fight because he said that they will make war and they will defeat them. You can only be defeated if, you, if, you, if you're fighting. And thanks for the question, Brother Paul. A saint can only be defeated if that saint is engaged in war, not, not prayer warfare. There's coming a day when the people of Yahweh will have to take up weapons to fight, but they're not going to win that fight. And some of you may say, why don't Yahweh allow us to win? Because the victory is not to be found in, in the boasting of the saints that we shot them and we kill them. No, 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 no. This is all about the victorious one coming back to defeat the enemy with the word of his mouth. Because since Genesis, remember we went to that, where Yahweh told, the serpent, there'll be enmity, there'll be war between the seed of the woman and your seed. But he will crush you. That's the whole point. He'll destroy your head. That's the whole point. So I want to submit to you that there'll be no run in the closet to pray saints. The saints will be equipped with strength to say, if you want to come for me, I'm going to fight. But remember, the army of the righteous will not win in the physical battle. You're not supposed to win. You'll take some of them out, but you're not supposed to win. Because if you win, then what's the purpose of Yeshua HaMashiach coming? Get the point? If we win the battle, the war, then why would Yeshua come back? Well, I hope somebody gets this. The purpose of our defeat would be for HaMashiach to come back, to crush to totally destroy, annihilate the enemy. The purpose of our defeat in this book right here, and in any situation in your life, the purpose of your defeat is for Yahweh to destroy your enemy. Please take note of that. The purpose of our defeat is for Yahweh to destroy the enemy. If ever you see the enemy winning, you should start rejoicing. If ever you see the enemy winning in anything in your life, you should begin to celebrate because the purpose of our defeat is for the enemies to be destroyed by your God. Glory, hallelujah. Some of them went and found lawyers to fight you and now they broke. They're begging. They went to court. They dragged you to court and the judge said, well, pay this, pay that, pay that. Oh, don't be mad about it because the purpose of your defeat is for Yahweh to destroy the works of the wicked. We are never going to remain below the wicked. Don't be mad. Don't be mad. 
I always tell her, don't, don't be upset people drag it before the court and drag it to, to some boss. Don't do that. Let them think they're winning because the purpose of your defeat is for Yahweh to glorify himself so you can then look up and say, that had it not been for Yahweh, this enemy would have prevailed or I would have been utterly crushed. Remember what Shaul said? Repressed, but not crushed. Prosecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Why did he say that? Because there is, or there are times, when the saints, especially emissaries, would go through so much that the world says, look at them. Even their God can't save them. And then Yahweh said, good. Now I'm going to come and deal with you all because I want you to be convinced that nothing could save them. The scripture records here that everyone, everyone living on earth, Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, everyone living on earth will worship it, except those whose names are written in the book of life, belonging to the Lamb slaughtered before the world was formed oh glory hallelujah everyone on earth will worship this beast which is the antichrist except those whose names are written in the book of life do you get that do you get that out of the billions of people living on planet earth at that time the only ones who will not worship the beast will be those whose names are written in the lamb's book of life now hear me again i say to y'all if you if you have a rapture where you're going to escape all of this how could it be it's saying here that everyone on earth will worship the beast except you why did it say that why did it say that everyone living on earth will worship the beast except those whose names are written in the book of life. Is it not because you are not going to escape anywhere? You will be in this. Would the saints ever be raptured? Would people ever be raptured or taken out of the world? Yes. But they would not be escaping this. I hope you get that. There is a time when they'll be drawn away. As Shaul said, the, the trump will sound and the Messiah shall descend. Remember that? And the dead and Messiah will rise first. And then those of us who are alive and what? Remain. Remain going through what? Going through what? You won't be escaping anything here. Because we get to that. You lost me right away. <laughs> right, let me say it to you again. The script is it? How you did you lose me? You lose the thought I'm, I'm, I'm or the, what I'm teaching, or you lost sound? You lost audio? You lost what? <laughs> I just say lost you. Are we back? We good now? Oh, you this young generation, y'all talk to beat me. Okay, we back. All right, fine. video i'm seeing myself as good as ever here so let me repeat that then the scripture does record that the trumpet of yahweh shall sound which trumpet the last one the last one and the dead in messiah shall shall be raised first those who it's gone again all right, hold on. Hold on a minute. All right, so let's see if it's good now. Is it good? I've disconnected the, the, the audio for that, 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 that part. Let me reconnect. Let me go back to the old school, the old boy. It's freezing now.
Tong. Mel, good to see you. So let's see how this is going to work. I'll switch over to eat to, to my, my data. Good. So we back. I say this, like, the, the, the church people say the devil don't want you all get this part. <laughs> this Revelation chapter 13 here is speaking to, is speaking to the fact that there will be, there will be a war. And the, the holy ones will be defeated in this war. So the holy ones will not escape. Okay? The holy ones are not going to escape the war. The holy ones will be defeated in that war. They're here. And they're going through this battle. Then it says in Revelation chapter 13 verse 8, Revelation of Yeshua chapter 13 verse 8 states that everyone living on the earth will worship the beast. All of you who remain and hollering at Jesus, you will worship the Antichrist because that's what you do even now. L let, me, let me just zone into y'all. And get you as angry as possible. So that those who in Linden and in Guyana can hate me even more. For you, for example, today. To walk into a church, as you call it. And stand before a preacher. Or with a preacher. Who told you that he or she knows that the Messiah's name is Yeshua. But you could call him Jesus. And that Jesus is the name above every other name. But they know that the Messiah's name is Yeshua. You are not only deceived. It is worst. You are delusional. You've been given by Yahweh according to Thessalonians chapter 2. You are given strong delusion. Even so that you will believe a lie. What is the lie you believe in the end? That the Antichrist is Yeshua and is Jesus. You believe that. Y'all are being trained now by your pastors and your apostle, your prophet, your bishop, your general bishops, your presbyters, your, 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 your conference presidents. You're being trained to believe a lie. And let me make it even stronger for y'all. You are even being trained now to believe that a lie is the truth to the extent that the truth doesn't even matter. You're being made to believe that a lie is the truth to the extent that the truth doesn't matter. So they tell you all, like Lad said, it really doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. Why are you majoring on the minor? It's not such a big issue. What does that mean God said? Some of them said, we choose to call him Jesus. It's not a problem. What did Richard McDonald, the pastor of South Assembly, say? We Jesus people. We know it all of our lives. What did, what did Raphael Messiah say? All of my life, said he, I've known Jesus, I know nothing else. What does have to do with the truth? So you're telling me that for all of your life, you knew something was wrong. Or you didn't know the truth. And now that you heard me speaking the truth, you came to Linden, met with the brothers on the hill and, and Richmond and said, all of my life, that's all I know. So hold on. When Yahweh said, through Kepha, that salvation is found in no other name. And nobody called Jesus existed then because English language, English language did not exist then. You saying to me that when truth comes to assemblies of God and when truth comes to the Adventists, you could just discard it. Why? Because y'all are being taught. Hear me? To normalize worshipping the Antichrist. That's why lies don't bother you. Come buckle up your seatbelt pastors. It's about to get graphic for you all in here. How many of you preachers who tell people that it doesn't matter what you call them? Because after all, what's the big deal? Let me tell you women who follow these men. All of y'all. If you walk into your house as a female. 
Or let me go to the men. You preachers, y'all. You, you preachers and, and your pastor, your prophet, your general bishop, your conference president, your, your apostle, your prophet S, your prophet, uh, who else? Y'all got chief apostles. All y'all. All your male church leaders that want to come here. Deacon and all y'all. Come here. Come here. You telling me, based on how you teach these people, that if you walk into your house one day and you see Deacon Johnny or Deacon Harry sexing down your wife, this is not a guess. You open the bedroom door and there he is or she is on top. You see it with your own two eyes. You know, people say you skin your eye and you see it all. You have to guess what they're doing. Naked down to the teeth. Based on what you teach these people, she could get off of the man and look you square in your eyes and say, yes, I was having sex with him. But it wasn't, we weren't having sex. And you dare not tell her that she's lying. Because you've taught the church that a lie is not a big deal. What did Wells say? Wells told me that all of us have our own truth. So her truth is she didn't, she, you saw it, but it, 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 she wasn't having sex. Because you told them that Yeshua is the name of the Messiah, but Jesus is the name above every other name, and that and that it doesn't matter what you call him. So Yahweh told you, call his son Yeshua. And you say, no, 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 the Messiah's name is, is, is Jesus. Okay, well, fine. Based on that conversation, you shouldn't be mad at your wife who tells you, you saw me having sex with this man, but I wasn't having sex with the man. Because at the end of the day, we all determine our truth according to wells. Would he accept that? Would he determine that, okay, that is my truth. And her truth is that she wasn't having sex with the person. These preachers are teaching y'all to lie. And that a lie is entirely acceptable. That's it, Brother Aubrey Shaggy. It wasn't me. Saw me banging on the sofa. It wasn't me. Heard the scream getting louder. It wasn't me. She even caught it on camera. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Can't believe she caught me red-handed. Sleeping with the girl next door. It wasn't me. It was not me. I don't care what you saw. It wasn't me. That's what they're teaching y'all. Do you understand how dangerous? Remember Barrett? <laughs> That's it, Javon. Remember Barrett? Sue, I'm um, Sue, I'm um, who Sue? Oh, oh, Sue? Who Sue? You are being trained by some of the most wicked. Pastor, let's say I know the lyrics. I, will, I go way back, son. <laughs> You are being, I don't even, I can't imagine. I can't Im Man, listen. Teachers say it takes a special kind of person to acknowledge the truth, embrace a lie, then adamantly seek to equate the lie with, oh my God, the lie with the truth. Now that's an example of strong delusion. You, y'all, I know it's graphic what I said, but I want you to understand the extent to which these people, these people, these people's lies go. He sees the woman in the bed with the man. He, he, they're naked. He sees everything happening. And the same woman says, his wife tells him, yeah, listen to what I'm saying to you. She, she acknowledges, yes, I was having sexual intercourse with him, but I wasn't having sexual intercourse with him. Yes, they would say, the Messiah's name is Yeshua. That's what they told me and they told you. But, his name is Jesus. Ben, all of them. Floyd, all of y'all came on my page before I remember all of you. And that's why I call you all name one by one because you remember what you did. I don't have secrets with playing with y'all. You came on my page and challenged with the most stupid arguments I've ever heard from y'all. The original name is that's what y'all say i don't know what's an original name a name is a name
but as Yahweh My goodness, Pastor Messi, they would see a penis and see the person's a woman. I'm telling Yahweh, I'm going somewhere with this here. Yahweh has brought this to my attention so strongly. Hear me. Let me take you back to the spiritual because some of y'all can handle this. Oh my God, I can't believe Pastor Doctor that. So what? You do it. How do you think you're born? And some of you married to your wife because you can't get none. You didn't drop from some tree somewhere. Let me take you back to Exodus and show you scripture with this concern. When Moshe went up for 40 days and nights to Sinai to meet with Yahweh, you do, do you know the people of Israel told Aaron? You all know it, right? They say, listen, you hear Sandal, listen to what they said. To Aaron, make us a God. Hear this, who we could worship. Because we don't know what happened to this Moshe fella. When he took the earrings of them, he said, bring your earrings, bring all your jewelry. Don't forget that this is what the Egyptians had loaned them, had given to them as a loan, but yeah, we say you plundered them. They took off what the wealth they had and they gave it to Aharon and he made this calf. Do you know what the people of Israel said? This is the God. Who brought us up out of Egypt. They didn't see any calf at the Red Sea. They didn't see any calf drowning Pharaohs in his army. They didn't see any calf killing all the firstborn in Egypt. Except theirs. But they said in delusion here. That this here is the God. Who brought us up out of Egypt. It's not different in the church today. Where they would look at a white. Caesar Borgia, the nephew of this person. They looked at an effeminate person. And some of them say, oh, we have a black Jesus. I don't care what color you have. Jesus is an absolute lie. And they would say, oh, there's, there's, no, there's no color either. You could call him what you want. After all, they would say that Jesus is the Messiah. And they will tell you, yes, the Messiah's name is Yeshua. But Jesus is the name that's above every other name. And that at the name of Jesus, every name must bow. And every tongue must confess. And you sit there today the Adventists you would say because you're not exempted you say you Sabbath keepers I should say Sabbatarians who keep the wrong Sabbath all the time every so often you bump in the right day if, 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 if the 20th day for the Hebrew people the seventh day of the week comes on, 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 on the Saturday it doesn't come all the time but you say you must keep the Ten Commandments. That's what you'll hold on to. Keep the Ten Commandments. And the only one you focus on is remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. You. You are the same ones. Who say that Jesus is the Messiah. Now can you tell me please. Where in the Old Testament can you find the name Jesus? Because you all said that the Old Testament was written in, Greek, in Hebrew. So if the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, where do you find Jesus in Hebrew? See how you always lie? And do you see how you are all submitting to an absolute demon, a prince, chief beast of an antichrist? You all bowing to the same thing. And the scripture records in Revelation chapter 13 verse 8 that everyone living on the earth will worship the beast except those whose names are written in the book of life. Can anybody tell me in this broadcast which other name is accepted globally? Which 
which name I should say is accepted globally these same wicked people tell you all that Jesus is translated which never happens into different languages Jesus never translates anything because it has no meaning but they argue a lie again to tell you yeah it's Issa in Arabic it's something else in Japanese it's something else in Chinese it's something else in Portuguese it's something else and they say all come back to Jesus Trinity Broadcasting Network the desire was TBN to reach the whole world they say with the gospel of Jesus what was Billy Graham's mission to reach the whole world with the gospel of Jesus why not Yeshua because Jesus is the name that the whole world will have to bow to that's why the Jesus church has said so much and you say wow apostle just said what the preacher said I'll tell you again Jesus is the name that the whole world will have to bow to except those oh glory whose names are written in the book of life so when they see us being killed for proclaiming Yeshua this it wouldn't click up here for some of them say oh my god this is what the scripture spoke about they'll be saying kill London I know some Jesus people now will say that kill him he talked about Jesus all the time kill him and they don't recognize that they'll be shouting for their soldiers to kill those whose names are written in the book of life the lamb's book of life the lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world i hope somebody get this they would be shouting for you to die because watch this jesus would be protecting them from the gun from the bomb from the sword from the laser from 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 some ai some artificial intelligence that can wipe you out remotely they'll be celebrating that jesus is protecting them not recognizing that it is the anti messiah they're worshiping that's why now when you are in trouble they would jump to say yes good it good for london i glad it happened because you're being trained to celebrate the persecution of those whose names are written in the lamb's book of life when you see the jesus people begin to celebrate what you're going through just take note that they are practicing and mastering what they will do then the whole world is going to worship the beast except those whose names are written in the lamb's book of life i know some of y'all in jesus certain are saying boy this man is telling the truth I'm done with this Jesus thing because if that's your mindset, you are a, you are a lost sheep. You're not wicked. You are lost. And Yahweh says, Yeshua said, "My sheep know my voice, and a stranger they wouldn't follow." You are hearing through this message today that I don't belong here any longer. But there's another set, especially your pastors and their wives, and your prophet and prophet s, and your apostle and their wives. They're the set who are telling you, "Don't listen to the London man." Don't listen to him because the leaders of the churches are those who the antichrist will endorse. Hear me as godly. The antichrist will work with your pastors y'all out there now and say y'all are godly. The fact that I have shown Adventists Bradley Knox hides all the time to watch me. I have shown you all this consistently. The apostle must show you all it. History show you all it. The facts show you all it. Go to Encyclopedia Britannica now you'll see it. When does the month begin? In the lunar cycle, which is the moon. It doesn't begin on a, on a Saturday and on a and every day the the seventh day of the week is a Saturday. Absolute garbage. This is common sense. Lunar means moon. Solar means sun. And some of you got a solar panel on your house and say stupid. Yahweh, you all is quoted at the Adventist Crusade that from new moon to new moon, you quote Revelation. 
you, you don't say from sun to sun, you caught it at your Adventist crusade. From new moon to new moon, which is a month, you caught it at the Adventist crusade that they'll be coming to worship. What does that mean? From Shabbat to Shabbat, new moon to new moon, mean month to month. Which is a lunar cycle. You don't see anything saying sun to sun. Because may I, invent, may I inform you all Adventists? There will be no sun in the new world. So if there's no S-U-N in the new world, how are you determining? How are you going to determine which is the seventh day of the week? Because there will be no sun present. Since the Lamb is that light. There'll be no day either. Neither will there be any night. So how do you determine which is the seventh day of the week? Apostle Thomas is inviting you all. Any Adventists, please go to CXC lessons for integrated science. And there you will learn in geography as well. You see, my degree is in environmental sciences. I told you all, I don't have a degree in theology. So I can help you. New moon to new moon. The lunar cycle, the lunar cycle, the lunar, lunar is moon, remember? The bear, the moon, and the big blue house. I think decent channel is done with that. Goodbye, goodbye, my friends, goodbye. And now it's time to go. The bear, the moon, and the big blue house. <laughs> right. <laughs> ah. Or the moon, the bear, and the big blue house. That, my friends, Yahweh has got a lunar system, not a solar month. What has struck me is when Revelation chapter 8 records that Everyone living on the earth will worship the beast, which is the Antichrist. Everybody, except those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. The Lamb who was slaughtered before the foundation of the world. His people will not bow. Bradley Knox says, see I told you what it means secret, what did pop up here? Question, how much churches, how many churches it should be? The Bible speaks of from Genesis to Revelation. What? See the Adventist here? Bradley Knox is, is an Adventist teacher. You see, you see the spirit here? You see how they come with a question that has nothing to do with saying to y'all? How many churches does the Bible speak about? He's asking. From Genesis to Revelation. Tell the people about what when the month begins, Bradley Knox. Tell them. And they are the those of you before. Do you see the Adventist spirit here? Where you help and bring something totally different. To draw you away from the focus of the conversation. The conversation is that even your church, as you call it, are deceived. And delusioned. Because you believe that every Saturday, every Saturday is the Sabbath which is an absolute lie. Because October, for example, had 31 days. There is no Hebrew month with 31 days in it. Huh? So every Saturday could be Sabbath when there is no Hebrew month with 31 days in it. Everyone. Now let's continue. Verse 9 states that everyone, those who have ears to hear, listen to this. And Bible Knox is one doesn't have ears to hear. Look at what he says. Those who have ears to hear, let him hear. Why did Yeshua say that? Why did Yeshua say that? Everyone who has ears to hear, let them hear. Why would he say this to you? There are a people who have ears to hear. And watch this. They are not the set 
who, are, who have ears to contend and to disobey. They are those who have ears to hear what the Spirit <laughs> teacher has asked Bradley how many legs does the insect have since he wants to demonstrate his ability to be relevant. <laughs> Let me tell you, how many legs does an insect have, Bradley? And then tell us how many how many body parts does an insect have. And then tell us if a spider is an insect, since you want to go way off track. Revelation has a, a statement made. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. They're those who have ears to contend. They're those who have ears to challenge. In other words, you, you know them. You see one right here. They would hear you to argue. They will hear you to rebut. They will hear you to challenge. They'll hear you to deny. They will never hear to obey. And you have some of them saying, Yeshua, and you are just as wicked. From the moment you hear a divine instruction, you, you, your mind is processing. How do I challenge this? Which angle can I take to affect this? Which angle can I use to escape what he's saying? How do I get out of this? And what do they tell you all? Some of you all know them because you live with some of them. You live with them. You know what they say to you? I know that the Bible says that. But, I know that, they say Yahweh now, I know that Yahweh has said that, but, and then some of them in this church have, I tell you, some of you live with them, they have the faith to tell you that I know that what you believe is in the scripture. But we all serve the same God, and we all have the same Savior. And we'll all be in the same heaven. Hell no. You are lost. You are destined for destruction. You are destined for destruction. How do I know that? Let me get to the book then. Verse 10. Come, come on here now saints. Pay attention. Verse 10. Focus. Verse 10. The revelation of Yeshua to Yochanan chapter 13 verse 10. Listen to this everyone. If anyone, quote, is meant for captivity, into captivity he goes. If anyone is to be killed with the sword, with the sword he is to be killed. This is in your Bible. You know what this tells you? That you cannot escape destiny. So come here, your, your preachers who got crusade. And your revival preachers, and your come to the altar and make Jesus the Lord preachers. Come here. The book states that you have no choice even when it comes to your end. If anyone is for captivity, into captivity he goes. If anyone is to be killed with the sword, with the sword he be killed. Meaning that some people will be killed with the sword and others will go to jail. And it's not going to be mixed up. The only ones who will go to jail will be those who are meant for captivity. And the only ones who will be killed with the sword are those who are meant to be killed with the sword. How do you tell me that you have a choice? And that don't I have free will according to what you all talk about? So if I have free will, why can't I choose to die by the sword? If I have free will, why can't I choose to go into captivity? Don't you have free will, according to what you all teach people? The Adventists teach you free will. Them. Nooks. How this tells you that even your end doesn't have a choice in it. It is predetermined. And what the fool comes is some other stupid thing asking me about how many hours in the day does the sun shine for. Watch him coming. Because I know them. This is how you know when, this, when those who bow to the Antichrist are under pressure. Because remember that as we live now, 
the Antichrist doesn't rule the saint. Because he's not yet been revealed. So we have dominance over the wicked at this time. You all deceive ones in the church. We have power over all y'all. Y'all hear me. And this is not even a game I'm playing with y'all. Pay attention to what I'm doing here. Did I not say to y'all, Brad Enoch watches me in secret? And he came and typed something here. Now, I had no clue that he was on the broadcast from what I saw. But I know by the spirit of truth. Do you get that? I don't, I don't know he was here. But I told y'all before he typed anything that Bradley Knox watches me in secret. Then I just said that to you. And what did you see? He popped up on the screen with a comment. This is a simple sign to some of y'all. Pay attention. Listen to me. There are very few and this is a very sad statement I'm making here. There are very few of you, even on this broadcast today, and who may watch the replay, who can understand the seriousness of what Yahweh's Spirit is doing right here with us as saints. Some of you will never understand it. Some of you may not sit here and get this and the seriousness of it. I called, no other name, I said that Bradley Knox is watching me in secret. And he came and typed right away. How, he lives in the U.S. How would I know what he's doing now in his house? Now there, there are hundreds of y'all in here. How can I choose one name out of all the hundreds of people and call that name? And he comes to type. Saints. These teachings are not to be taken lightly. The spirit of the Antichrist is at work in church people, as you call them. They are delusional and they are dangerous. Especially, I told you all that, the teacher, the leaders in the church. The leaders in these churches, the prophet, the pastor, as they call themselves, the apostle, the evangelist, the preachers in these churches, I told you all, they are the most wicked. For they are the ones who tell the, the followers, don't follow the man, don't listen to them. No, don't listen to London. These people are dangerous saints please and y'all are becoming comfortable with the delusional wicked dangerous people i repeat certain things for you to hear how destructive you are some of y'all to your own children you know how dangerous it is for you to have a child two three or four years old in the bosom of a Jesus preacher and a Jesus singer and they care and you don't see any danger in it and they're singing Jesus songs over your child and you don't see danger in it they have acknowledged to you that the Messiah is Yeshua but they continue saying Jesus all the time and you don't see danger in it then it means that you are also delusional. Why? Thank you for asking. Because you believe that strong connections with darkness poses no threat to you. When the scripture asks of you, what fellowship does light have with darkness? You are so delusioned that you believe that though you know Yeshua to be true, Hooking up your children in the, in the arms of a Jesus person, letting them be as close as possible to your children, is no threat. See, Michael Fraser told some in Wisma. In Wisma, Brethren Church, the Torah of the in London is preaching. See that? Today he is in the grave. Michael Fraser from Brethren Church over River. Wisma in Linden. Told the people, turn off your TV. 
Don't watch London. He's dead. And I'm still here. And they still watch it now. If anyone is to go into captivity, he will. If anyone is to be killed with the sword, he will. This is when. This is when. Oh my God. Yahweh's holy people must persevere and trust. It didn't say this is when they'll, be, they'll escape. It didn't say this is when they're going to uh, avoid tribulation. It says that when... Oh, let me preach this today. It is when you are going into captivity and when you see your brothers being killed by the sword, then it says, you ought to persevere. It is then you ought to trust as a saint. Oh my God. It's not when things are going okay for you. It's not when everything is all right as in, with Jesus. It's not when, oh my God, I love the African Jesus, everything is all right. No, 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 no. It is when you see persecution. It's when you see execution, when your neck gets cut off. It is then it says that you ought to persevere, not to actually be taken out of the world. It is then you are to trust. Look at when Yahweh is telling us that we should trust. When? Trust when tribulation is at its peak. Why am I telling all this today, saints? Even in this time, before the tribulation really begins, you are experiencing turmoil because the spirit of the Antichrist is at work in some of your houses. I'm telling you today, it is when you see trouble in your house. That's when you are to trust. That's when you are to persevere. You do not trust and you don't persevere when things are going all easy for you. There's no requirement when you when things are easy because you have no need. You have no need to persevere when everything is fine. But oh, it's when you can see them telling you there's an easy way out. Just come back to Jesus. There's an easy way out. If you come to Jesus, I'll give you some money. We we'll give you loans. Remember, I told Bradley that same Bradley knows that same demon came to me and told me that all I have to do. Let him tell me, I'm, I'm telling him right here. This is the devil who came and told me. That all I have to do is to get 28 people, 28 people to sign up to say that we're all Adventists and I'll get a house. I'll get college tuition paid for me to study. My children's fees will be paid for them to, to go to school. We'll have a car. We'll have, we'll have a building. We're going to have salary. I'll have, I'll be paid a salary. That same devil Bradley notes said, if all you need to do is to sign with 28 people to say that you are an Adventist and you get all of these things. And I said to him, Bradley, you sound familiar. And the fool didn't even see where I was coming from. I said, you sound familiar. He said, man, pastor, come on. Just sign it. It's easy. Look, just sign. Just sign, said Bradley Knox. Get 28 people and you will get your, your, your house will be paid for, your housing will be paid for, school will be paid for, you get a vehicle to drive, you get salary, your children will go to school. Just sign with 28 people and say that you are an Adventist. I said, you sound familiar, Bradley. You sound very familiar. And when he didn't, I know his, his IQ doesn't lend itself, itself to him understand what I said. So I said to him, you sound like the devil. Get out of my house. I told Bradley Knox, who's here, an Adventist teacher in New Jersey. I said, I would prefer to live under a tree than sell my soul to y'all. So y'all in Guyana don't know, and I always tell y'all that. When you see me walking, should Yahweh grace me to walk in excessive, if possible, wealth? It could be because I turned away from the reward of the wicked. I could have been living in the U.S. debt free. But I had to be an Adventist. 
I could have had my PhD because Dr. Dr. his boy, Dr. Kennedy, swore that I went to college to study Greek. He said, you're too fluent in understanding this language. You had to have been to college to study Greek. And my father laughed and said, boy, daddy said, no, my son never, he looked at that, he said, impossible. Your son had to have been to school to study Greek, to understand these words so easily and to use them. My father is a witness to this. I walked away from how many y'all Jesus preachers in Ghana could tell me you did that? Y'all has run to the US to get money. You, you whores and you harlots. I turned it away. I said to Bradley Knox, I will never accept this from you because you are the devil. I could hear, hear Satan in him. Pastor Mel was there. He said, all you have to do is just, just sign this paper. Just find 28 names along with yours. You get all of these things and I turned away from it. Mind you, because someone need to hear this, mind you, when Brady Nuss came with that offer, I was not being paid a salary by the church. And up until today, I am never paid a salary by any church. I have never been given a salary by a church since I started preaching and leading the saints. Since 2012, since 2012 to today, I have never had a salary paid to me by any church. I have never had a pastor's anniversary celebration, never at pastor's birthday conference, never at founder's celebration, never. Now tell me please, how many of y'all would not have said that you should, as is a God, especially y'all like to say this, you should be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove, apply wisdom brother. All you have to do is to, is to take the money and your whole family will be set for life. Me? 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 See Pastor Mel said, Apostle, they promised to, to make you and your family American citizens. Watch. Watch, please. Watch. I want sense to understand. I want Guyanese to understand that when you see me stand and preach this way by Yahweh's grace, don't, don't think there's no money involved here. For 11 years, up until now, I have never received a salary from a church. Never. And in spite of all of that, I still said, years ago, tithing is food. When I came to the truth, and I don't need food. I don't need money. So tithe can be money. And I told the saints, don't give any money called any tithe veneer. Can you imagine how much debt I'm supposed to be in? And how much my family is supposed to be struggling? Because I don't have a salary, yet your pastors come and have all kinds of meetings. Since you're supposed to raise the pastor's salary, you're supposed to get... Now, please understand, as I say to you all, all the time, that it is the responsibility of the saints to give to those who teach them. But you've never heard me beating anyone of you all to say, you have to give me a salary and you have to pay me a salary. It is your responsibility to take care of the ones who teach you. And I'm not going to beat you to do that because my policy is simple. If Yahweh's spirit dwells in you, then he will tell you the truth about everything, including that. I thank Yahweh for saints who understand that it is when you have a tough time, you persevere and you trust. It's when you go through hell. That's when you persevere and you trust. I praise Yahweh for saints. My children always talk about it. Who I could pick up the phone now and send a message to say or call. Call a son, call a daughter, call a brother, call a friend. Say, listen, I may need this. 
and they would help me immediately because they are saints who have vowed to Yahweh that I will never beg and I will never starve. You understand me? Get it clear. I told you last week, I have to say that my banana should have found Apostle Thomas. Apostle Thomas is a faithful brother. <laughs> he doesn't play with that. Apostle Thomas, listen, when those bananas, and they, the trees have to bear, when those bananas tree, when those banana tree begin to, 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 to send out the bananas, he sees in the spirit. Yeah, yeah, I have to give my brother this banana. Yahweh is so faithful, man. Saints are assigned to ensure that I don't beg because they're saints who have the record. They're saints like Pastor Mel or Brother Malachi Eliakim, who you all need to be Rousseau, Pierre. My sons, my daughters, they sat, my father, most importantly, heard this man, Brad Inux, tell me all you have to do is to just accept this offer. You set, you'll be a US citizen and everything. And I said, no, I would prefer to be under a bridge or under a tree than to take this money from you all. Saints, we are encouraged to persevere and trust. Trust when persecution is most intense. Trust him when the wicked is after your throat. Trust. Don't back down. Don't run away. Don't hide. Don't cower. Don't give in. Trust. When they threaten to take everything from you, trust. Persevere. If you lose a car, you lose a house, whatever you lose, trust and persevere. Glory. See, a saint since it's all given to me, she's never been in lack. Yahweh is so faithful. Trust, saints. Don't get weak. That's why I could sit here by Yahweh's grace and call people name. Because they've made a commitment. And if you all in Semis, God will ask the pastors what they said. Ask George Smith, ask Joshua Messiah, ask any one of them. They have had a meeting. Imagine, y'all can imagine that. We are semis that God has a special meeting to call my name. Are they, are they leaders meeting? Are they top level meeting and said that Nigel London, me, must not be heard to have preached in any assemblies of God church. Can you imagine that Jesus, people who say God loves everybody, and God is love and they all love everybody, but they hate me though. Can you imagine that the loving assemblies of God church had a meeting and John Smith, Raphael Messiah, Pereira, Lal, Jadubal, Serge Bali, Morris McKinnon, all y'all had the all meeting. And the decision was taken at the assemblies of God level that Nigel London must never preach because I used to go preaching in the Assemblies of God Church and told the pastor, don't ever let me hear you having Nigel London preaching in any church or you'll be disciplined. <laughs> so, so Selvin Church prays that and I could just download from my house. I could walk there in, in two minutes and tell him, dare not tell me I should go preaching there. You can't have anything to do with this man. But they still can't find the time to bring all of their semis of God pastors together, all of the evangelicals together, all y'all Joshua Ministers Fellowship, y'all Linden Minister Fellowship, Burbis Ministers Fellowship, the whole country together, bring Barbados, bring, bring the USA, bring all y'all to one location that I will pay for. I'm going to find the equipment. I, I know y'all like free food, so I'll give you refreshments. And no cheap drink. I will pay for everything. All I'm asking y'all to do, please, John and Raphael and all y'all, please. Adventist leader, all y'all, please. 
just accept the invitation to publicly debate me or silence me, I should say, regarding what I preach regarding Yeshua, predestination, and tithing. Three, Yeshua HaMashiach being the, the only name given under heaven. Maybe men must be saved. Secondly, predestination. All you have come to me with that you have a choice as to who you serve. Number three, come to tell the whole church that tithing is money. Come. I beg you, please. Adventist, Baptist, Pentecostals, Independent, all of y'all, please, I am going to book the venue. You name it. You want to go Marriott? You want to go Pegasus? Wherever y'all want to go. Egbert Benjamin, where do you want to go? Whichever venue you choose, I will pay for it. Come. Are we going to stream it live for the whole world to see that you have proven me to be a liar? So instead of telling the people I mustn't preach in any, in any assembly of God church, do that. Do it, please. Let all of your members see how wicked you are. Because here am I, the one you all say is a false preacher and all the rest of it, begging you to expose me publicly. And you still don't want to do it. I have made a vow to you all as an apostle of the Lord Yeshua that I will never preach again. And some people say, oh God, apostles don't say that. I'm telling you that. I told Brady Nooks that. I told Dr. Kennedy that. They sent me the God leader in Orange, New Jersey. I told all of them. I Listen to me. I will never preach again if you could answer these questions and prove me wrong. Up until now, I'm still preaching. I told the assemblies of God all y'all that. I'm begging you to, sh to shut me up permanently. Since I say so many bad things about y'all and call your name and live broadcast, please do what it takes to silence me. Let us have the public meeting. Let everybody see us streaming live and then they will hear you silencing me publicly. Prophet Joel Wakbo, all of them, that's what I said, independent. Joel, all y'all. Salam of the fool, the thief, all of y'all. All of you. You, you African harlots in Guyana, all of y'all. You pimps in the pulpit. Come. Now, now what else you could ask me for? I'm begging y'all to come. Now, if you want some backup, bring the Muslims with y'all. Because I know y'all cross the tables and do things easily now. Y'all interact with anybody. So bring the Muslims to help you out. Because some of the more informed are some of you. Bring all of them. Pastor Mel, they did... The lady didn't show up to, to challenge you last week. We have to understand that when persecution is intense, perseverance is more intense. When persecution is intense, perseverance is more intense. We don't quit. We don't stop and say, I, I, I done with this issue thing because after all, I'm suffering too much. No! When everything seems to be going wrong, that's when we persevere even more. That's when we trust even more. And that's when we stand even stronger to say that even though I'm going through these things, I will not lose trust. It is always well. It is always well. It is always well. That's how we function as saints. When you get the news that have just shot and killed your brother in the faith because what he believed in, we persevere. When you get the news that the police are at your gate to arrest you because of your preaching righteousness, we persevere. When you get the news that you summon to court because you preach or you stood for righteousness, we persevere and we trust. We persevere and we trust. We don't quit. We persevere and we trust. When you get the news, that you've been fired because of your conviction. And you don't celebrate Christmas. You're not a team player. We celebrate. We persevere. And we trust. By Yahweh's grace. It becomes more intense next week, Yahweh willing. When, you, when we look at the second beast arising. Saints, trust. And persevere. If the world, the church I'm talking about as the world, are practicing, if they're practicing how to worship the Antichrist, 
then you had got to practice persevering and trusting. They are rehearsing how to sidestep, how to boycott, how to undermine, how to sabotage. You must practice how to persevere and how to trust. They are rehearsing right now how to, how to put your name. When, when you make an application, push it to the bottom. They're practicing how to deny you favor and deny you what's rightfully yours. When they practice that, you have to practice how to persevere and how to trust. It doesn't matter what they do to sabotage what you're doing. You persevere and you trust. Trust and persevere. Hashtag, that's it right there. Persevere and trust. Trust and persevere. It doesn't matter what you do to me. I will continue to persevere in reference to my conviction and my faith. I will not be shaken. We shall not be moved. We are like trees planted by the rivers of water that will bring forth fruit in its season. Our leaves will not wither. And whatever, glory, hallelujah, whatever we put a hand to do, it shall prosper. Oh, glory, hallelujah. We shall persevere. And we shall trust. It doesn't matter how much you try to shake our faith. You can shake our bodies. You can shake our bank account. You can shake our houses. You can shake our business. But you can never shake what we believe in. For we are convinced. And we are persuaded. There is an eternal conviction in the heart of a saint. You cannot take what is inside of me. You could take what's around me. But you can never take what's deep within the core, my lev, you call it in Hebrew, my heart. You can't take what's in the depth, the deepest recesses of my being. You can never take away my conviction and my perseverance. I shall not be shaken. Oh, glory, hallelujah. A thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand may drop at my right hand. But in all of this, I shall not be shaken. I shall trust him. For Yahweh is my shield. And Yahweh is my defense. Oh glory Hamashiach said that when they arrest you. When they grab you and take you before the, the governor. And before the magistrate. Don't wonder what you're going to say. He said that the Holy Spirit. Ruach HaKadosh is going to tell you what to say. Because I shall not be shaken. And I shall not be moved. Like Kiefer. Oh glory hallelujah. When they said do not ever teach. In this name again. You see the assemblies of God said it now. Because I preach with Yeshua. I am not allowed to preach in their church. So your wicked pastors are saying. That they acknowledge. That the Messiah's name is Yeshua. But I mustn't preach it in the church. And you all said these men are godly. And I should respect them. I don't respect devils. Never. Oh, but apostle, they're going to undermine your business. They're not going to buy from you, so what? David said I was young. And when he got old, he was about to die. He said, and I'm, now I'm old. And I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. I have never had a child who had to go begging somebody for money to eat because daddy had none. I've never had a child who had to go to school to say, please, please give me a grant. Glory, hallelujah. Who can separate me from the love of Yahweh? Oh, when CSEC exams are about to be paid with Shemaria London. When CSEC was about to be paid with Shekinah London. And they said, okay, then you can apply. You can apply for what you call thing, Apostle Thomas. Uh, where, 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 where you have some, 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 some money. Subsidy. I thank Yahweh for my mother. She said, my grandchildren would never have to apply for any subsidy. Paid in cash. And we paid for Shekinah to write 14 subjects. Great Google Moogoo. We paid cash. Because nobody in this region, region 10, upper the Marabba Beast will ever say that I had to apply for grant because we couldn't afford to pay for our children examination. No!
Don't tell me that Yahweh's grace is not sufficient. Don't tell me that Yahweh does not have means to take care of the righteous. Yahweh is faithful. When you see me in my old t-shirt, jump in the truck, jump in the back of the truck, packing cement on the truck, packing blocks on the truck, load and stand in the truck to drive it, understand, understand please as a saint. This is not a possibly some menial job. You must understand what I'm teaching young men. I'm teaching my sons. I'm teaching my daughters that you as a saint have a means of living and you must never beg bread. They must understand that you could go into the sun and you can toil. You can work hard. No sweet skin preacher. My son Reginald jumps in a truck packing barrel. Drive to New York. No, they must understand that we could work hard. We know sweet skin preacher. And though the saints take care of me, they will understand. Can you all see? I want to show you all something here. See this? This is me on a construction site. Working. Building house. Then you see brother cry, don't trick nobody for any money here. In the blazing sun. Look, Sir Gino, she works with Pastor Reginald Shipping Company. I watch my son, she's here too. Pack a 40 foot container himself. We work hard. Why? Because I saw my father, 70 plus years old, still raking grass, leaves, weeding a yard, maintaining yard, a yard. My father has taught me, my grandfathers have taught me to work hard as a man. Yahweh is faithful saints. We we're we not going to beg. We are not going to beg. He is able. We don't beg. Because the wicked will corner. You can see this as we, as we talk next week. The wicked will corner and trap some of y'all. Or oh, we'll talk about this. If you as a saint are not careful, you will be trapped into the easy way out. As I said to you all, they tell you, just, just come on, Jesus is no big deal. And all they want you to do is keep saying Yeshua, but accept them with Jesus. Even some spouses want that. You say Yeshua, but accept them with Jesus. You say Yahweh, you say Yeshua, but you accept them with the God and Jesus. That's what they want. Don't stand for righteousness. Compromise. That's what they want. But we shall not be moved. Since I thank Yahweh for you all, I praise Him for your strength. I praise Him for your for the graces given to you. And I thank Yahweh that you have been chosen to persevere and to trust. We shall not be moved. Like the tree planted by the water, we shall not be moved. My father's type. For thanks for this enlightening explanation All right, come here, <laughs> of the book of Revelation, son, and your encouragement to the saints. I am persuaded that we, the saints, are more than conquerors, not only because of our calculation us, but also because in that final battle, we shall all be on the winning side. <laughs> Hallelujah! With our Savior, Yeshua, the Messiah. I thank Yahweh for every day, every day for His faithfulness thank you so much daddy i'm so grateful and those who say to me you are 50 years old just about and you say daddy yes he's my daddy i'll be 70 if he's still alive and still call him daddy he is daddy and she's mommy forever that's how highly i regard my father and my mother i thank yahweh for you all we will be on the winning side <laughs> when, the, when the dust settles we will be on the winning side
Boy, you're going to make me preach. My father make me preach today. You may read my obituary. As you say, my eulogy. You may see my death announcement because they took me out. But I'll still be on the winning side when the dust settles. You may read about my death, but you haven't read about my end. Just know that. You may read about my death, but you will not have read about my end. Because you're not a sin, so you can't even see it. Glory, hallelujah. So again, I say thanks to Yahweh for you all. Trust. Saints, trust. And persevere. Do not be shaken. And to those who watch and say what they say, let me tell you again. In 11 years, all of the years that I've been leading Core Ministries International, I have never been paid a salary. I have never demanded a salary. I have never ever had a pastor's anniversary, a pastor appreciation day, pastor birthday anniversary celebration, pastor's wife's anniversary celebration, pastor wedding. I have never had any celebration whatsoever where they collect money to give to me. Never. And in 11 years, I've never had to beg even for a meal. Glory. Hallelujah. Thanks be to Yahweh for his grace and his mercy. Do well, saints, until we meet again. Be strengthened. Be edified. Be encouraged. It is well. Shalom. Bye-bye.